You're listening to the Blacktop Banter Podcast, the premier podcast in the asphalt industry, made for contractors with contractors. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Blacktop Banter. And I'm excited. As people know, I'm a self-professed asphalt blacktop geek. Um, I love everything about how we make it up, how we figure out its density, how we put it down, how we learn to put it down, uh, how we learn to not put it down, like all everything of how to do it correctly, not do it correctly, and and just how we do it better over over time. So, um, ironically, I was asked to speak at a high school here probably a couple months ago about entrepreneurship and whatnot. And kind of went through the whole spiel of how I got from point A to point B, and here I am. And uh, afterwards, was fortunate enough to talk with a couple of students. And uh, one of them uh, had mentioned, hey, I think my dad was just at that expo that you were at. And I was like, you think so? He's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, then I started to ask specifics, and then I realized that maybe she doesn't know the specifics. So then I asked Pat Mahoney, who asked me to speak. I was like, can you connect me with whoever her dad is? We get into this conversation. Um, we had an introductory meeting, and uh, here we are. So today I have Paul Cardis, who is CEO and co-founder of On3. Um, Paul has over 150 articles, five cover stories, a book, and highly regarded by his peers in the area of leadership and customer experience. On3 is the industry's first field knowledge management system designed to provide frontline teams with the knowledge they need to be better, faster, and safer. Driving incredible returns and increased satisfaction, On3 can complement any existing LMS or it can be deployed as a standalone system. Paul is going to tell us what that means coming up here on Blacktop Banter. Paul, thank you for joining me again today, my friend. Wonderful, Marvin. Great to be here. Appreciate that. Yeah, so we we kind of have a unique connection there because you spoke at Mr. Mahoney's class. I spoke. I actually was Mr. Mahoney's student. Wow. Somewhat. I avoided classes where he was at the front of the class. Right. So I just kind of was in proximity. Like I didn't really want to be underneath that thumb. He was a, he's a hard nosed wrestler. Um, my son yeah. is a wrestler. My son uh, has been right coached up. by Mahoney, which has been kind awesome. of, uh, ironically to come full circle, been a great influence. But if I realized I was following you with a, with your portfolio and repertoire, I probably would have bolstered mine up a little bit. The kids were kind of probably like, when I was there, after yeah, that, that wasn't one, the but... case. No, they were very <laughs> interested. My daughter told me right away, "Dad, you need to meet this guy." I was like, "Okay, awesome." Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background and how you got here. I, ironically, we're both in the same kind of area here in Wisconsin. We were just talking yep. before the show. Wisconsin's kind of been a hot spot for construction development and uh, and whatnot as of late. But tell us a little bit about the journey of how you get to where you are as the co-founder and CEO of On3, and then we'll get into what On3 actually is. Yeah, right on. Well, I came from a family uh, in the home building industry. So my dad basically has was been in construction. He was an engineer by trade, and then he, he got into building uh, residential and commercial, um, and uh, really, and then he landed on renovation. So it was kind of in our in our family for a long time. And I ended up here at the University of Wisconsin Madison, and. I was on track to actually uh, become a teacher. Um, so, you know, that was my goal. And as I was moving along, I got into graduate school and I realized, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not really want to go be in the high schools. I want to continue on and, and do more. And uh, and then I landed basically uh, on doing a lot of research and, and got into technology. And then so then, then I kept pushing forward and then the idea came up, well, why aren't you doing some technology for the construction industry? Because we're really behind, you know, is what my dad would tell me. And and so that really piqued my interest many, many years ago when I was in my young 20s, you know. So I launched right out of school. While I was in graduate school. I launched my first tech platform um, in graduate school at UW. And it took off. Um, and it was, the company was called Avid Ratings. It was a customer satisfaction survey firm, you know, ratings and reviews and before ratings and reviews were a thing. Yeah. Uh, so this was prior to Google. This is prior to Yelp. This is, you know, I mean, we're talking in the nineties folks. This was, this yeah. was a long time ago. So, yeah. So we got, we got you to blame the fact that I got to ask all my customers <laughs> to give me a review right on Google and whatnot. Yeah. Part of, part, part of the issue. That's okay though. It's a lot better to, to have that word of mouth. 
Well, it right. was yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And forget about being nice, right? <laughs> right. You you paid us for this. This was an exchange, right? Yep. Yeah. Here's yeah. the product. Here's the check for the product. If you don't get the check for the product, must something must have been wrong with the product, right? And then we just right. fix it and that's done. But when customer relations really started to happen was when when that stuff started to happen, when people were like, oh, they asked for my opinion. Now, right. trust me, you, if you're on social media at all, Paul, you understand you oh, don't have yeah. to ask for opinions anymore. No. They just come on out, right? So if yeah. they're going to be doing it, doing it for your business and uh, reviewing your business and rating your business, it, it seems like that was just an untapped thing that needed to get done and was going to get done. It, it was coming either way. It was. Yeah. It's really a creation of the internet, right? Mm-hmm. As the internet, it 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 removed barriers. Communications just been getting accelerated faster and faster and easier. And and now we can't. You know, you don't buy a pizza without getting a you know a yeah, star rating sure. and a review, right? Yeah. And um, not only that, it, you don't buy one without it, looking at them. It, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we go out to eat, you know, and so it's become a part of our life. We were in the early stages in the construction industry to help us help companies get ahead of that. So, Mm. and so we were helping them by reviewing that and all that. So anyway, I built that company up, ended up selling it to a Microsoft executive in 2000 and took a little time off. Wasn't long, really 60, 90 days, and then started working on the next one. (laughs) So a bit of a serial (laughs) entrepreneur and I got bored real fast and said, Hey, let's get going. So we, we created uh, uh, this new idea of, you know, where, what are we doing with scopes of work? You know, we, we know scopes of work and training and construction was very antiquated, right? It's, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's old school apprenticeship, you know, you, you shadow me or, you know, and, and we'll learn the business. And it usually takes a long time, you know, so in the construction industry, it was taking anywhere from eight to 18 months really to mm-hmm. onboard a new project superintendent in a, in a construction site. So, and, and so that's really long. And we looked at that and the process is like, man, this is like no, nothing going on here. There's no technology at all. And so then the idea was, well, let's, let's create a platform that really kind of brings the YouTube experience, the YouTube phenomenon, yep. you know, like your dishwasher's broken, go to YouTube, look it up, yep. watch a video for three minutes, go fix it, yep. go good to go. Right. How do I, how do I start to quilt? Right. There like, you go. Any, anything, <laughs> right. Like how do anything. I quilt? Like, how do I shoot archery? Like any of that stuff, we're like, okay, yeah. maybe this is how we're going to learn. This is it. But we don't have that. And we thought that could be very powerful if done right, right? Because YouTube doesn't work in construction because you don't know what you're getting. Is it right? right? You know, the one, the big thing we learned was that there's over 3,400 counties in America, all with their own code and re- different construction requirements times 7 million building products. That's, oh, how many, that's awesome. That, yeah, that's how many building products that we have in the universe. It's an infinite number. When you put all that together, it's like literally, you know, almost infinity in terms of how much crap we have to really understand and digest. And and then one other interesting piece for the home builder folks out there, and I know you guys are are, are not directly in that, but there's 60,000 points of failure in a single house, including, you know, doing pavements and drives and 60, all that. 60,000. Points of failure in a single in a house, house. One house. It's crazy. Holy cannoli. Man. Yeah, no, it's not nuts. And that's yeah. an average house. That's not like some crazy McMansion thing. This yeah, is yeah. your average house. <laughs> McMansion, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I was thinking about a ranch-style home with one garage that's attached to it. Like, yeah. Pretty basic. Maybe yeah. that has 45,000. But yeah, the point is, that it's a lot. Yeah, 45,000, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, a lo- it's a lot of stuff. You wow. Know? So average builder has, you know, 30-ish, 20, 30-ish trades, you know, that they're they're going to be coming in and out. And and everything is communicated with basically possibly a written scope of work on a Word document. More than likely, it was a conversation and a handshake. And, yes, I was going to say that's bingo. And, yeah, that's bingo. Yeah, wild. Yeah. When you think including, about that. It, yeah, including your industry, right? You guys are part of this, right? Yeah, yeah, you, absolutely. I mean, that's a lot of time. It's like we're, we'll be hiring here at, at West Coast Asphalt Maintenance this summer. And I have mentors and coaches and whatnot, and uh, some of them are guys who have started their businesses and some who aren't. They're from outside, which I I enjoy both aspects of it. But the guys from the outside, they're like, well, it's to take like two weeks to train somebody. I'm like, no, dude, like this Mm-mm. is this summer they will learn. Hopefully next year they come back and I can take my hands off. Right. Like it takes right. that amount of time to encounter everything that we're going to encounter and how best to to work it but I, I to to get to kind of piggyback off of your point imagine if everything was like that 
Imagine if your doctor learned by word of mouth, somebody told him how to do an append, uh, appendectomy, you know, you'd be like, no, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Right. But yet mm -hmm. here we are trusting, um, contractors like myself and other contractors, um, to be like, yeah, they just told these guys how to do it and they're going right. to do it. Wow. Right. That's wild. Yeah, exactly. And we don't know how much they know. And then you've got factor in turnover and factor in the fact that we have this labor shortage. Mm -hmm. you, know, you find a good person and let alone then you have to train them and keep them excited about the job while they're bored because they're bored, by the way, that whole summer of observing being a green Absolutely. horn is not a fun summer for them. Yep. Right. So then they, they maybe move on and they decide they're going to go work at Starbucks instead or whatever. Right. So it, it, it is an interesting time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're trying to solve that right now with our platform. So when, how does the platform work? Because, uh, if you go to YouTube, like we're going to keep using that example mm -hmm. and I type in how to prep a driveway for asphalt pavement, there's going to be 500 videos probably that have yep. that title. And yep. then there's going to be 500 different people who tell us how 400 of them have never done it before. <laughs> they took it from a book somewhere or learned whatever, and they're hoping to get some views, right? It's the Wild West, essentially, when it comes to it. Now, we do have other forms. Don't get me wrong. But we were at a lot of expos with a lot of educational segments and doing whatever. But that is very costly. And how much do you retain from somebody speaking versus something that you can review over and over and over and over and over again? I don't know if, if you're like me at all or anything, Paul, but um, I'm, I'm not a wrestler, but my son wrestles. And I have to watch what he's talking about 50 times before I get it. But if he's there and shows me, I can usually get in about 10 times. Mm -hmm. But he's not always there and shows me. So I end up having to watch it quite a bit. But I, to have that resource to be able to watch it, to me, is very valuable versus me having to wait till I'm on their schedule or the opportunity arises again for me to learn correctly how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. That That's so part of it. And then the other big piece that we're building into our platform is verifying that we remember it over time because the human True. brain does a horrible thing. It forgets, right? And, yeah. you know, I don't know how many details are in what you do, but I'm sure it's not something you pick up on a weekend, as you mentioned. So there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of details, right? Yeah, right? There's a lot of e things we can screw up. You mentioned, yeah. you know, everything's yeah. got to be right. Yeah. And, and, and that's why it's it takes a while for these folks to learn, but they're going to forget stuff. So we also built in what we call these check ins, too. So you as a business owner know that you have competency, high level mm. of competency across the board, because all it takes is one person who is, is incompetent and in particular skill and they could screw up the job. Right. Oh, yeah. It gets very expensive. Right. And, and mm -hmm. reworks are. Yeah, that's, a, that's the death of the business. And, and For I, sure. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're if you're quoting to win on margin uh, by, you know, hey, we're going to we're we really want this job. We're going to take a five percent margin. You know, but we're going to get it because we really want it. We need it because it's going to be great for our reputation. Mm -hmm. And then you have one person that screws that up in any facet and you lose your margin. And then you start. There's a conflict there because you're doing a job at a loss or a break even point, And it begins to be a bad experience for not only the customer, but for the contractor. And that all could have been avoided if the incompetency. I like that we're using that word a lot. Uh, would have been solved, right? Or or taken care of through yeah. proper training and check-ins. Because yeah. there's things that I learned 20 years ago that I'm sure if I had the tool in my hand and you weren't an expert, I probably looks like I know what I'm doing. But if it was to spec and it was whether we get paid on it or not, maybe I wouldn't hit the mark, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's very it's a very interesting thing that you all are doing with the check-ins. Yeah. So I'll share more about how that works, but that's, you know, broad strokes. That's, that's what we're doing. We're, we're basically capturing all these scopes of work per client. Cause that's the other thing. We don't, we don't come in saying, Hey, we got the library. We know everything. We actually work with each client to record their own. Cause I bet your way you do stuff is a little different than one of your competitors. Yep. And certainly as we move across the country in different climate zones, it's going to be very different, right? What's happening in Florida in your business, I'm sure is vastly different than what's happening here in Madison and area and all of the, you know, around the country. So True. 
So we built on three create, which is our sister application, which allows companies to record with their cell phones, all the different processes, the way they do it. And then we turn that into uh, basically scopes of work and learning that's in the wow. platform. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really that combination of everything that just it started to unlock. And then we had to do one more thing. And then it was a big challenge. And that was the Internet's not necessarily good for construction people. <laughs> that's true. Right. We have poor Internet. And yeah. People don't realize that because we, we realize, you know, everybody else has great Internet because you're in your office, you're at your home, whatever. You've got good Internet or you're in town. Well, we're doing work, not always the case, especially with my new residential home building clients. They definitely are in the areas where they haven't even put the towers up some places, mm -hmm. right? Because these are new communities that are growing. Um, so internet's real sketchy. Uh, I remember being out on site with, uh, it was at an industry event, and, and one of the big software guys, they're writing a major ERP for the builders. They literally were, were, were uh, using uh, uh, satellite hotspots. They would drive this van on site, to bring the internet in, bounce it off the, the satellites just so they could feed their software and add wow. their, their costs. And I'm like, well, there's no way we're going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we said, all right, let's make it work offline. So we, we solved that problem too. So now it works offline. So basically you can be off the grid. And as long as you've installed the app, installed your package, your li your libraries, you're, you're basically, you're, you're free. You're tethered from the internet. You don't mm -hmm. need to be tethered to the internet. I mean, you're, you're tether free. Yeah. In my opinion, Dynapack CC900G Roller is the best roller on the market for driveway and small parking lot paving contractors. The seismic technology in these rollers is unbeatable for the smoothness and compaction they provide. Take my word for it or visit Dynapack.com to find a dealer near you. Hey, Blacktop Banner fans. This is Michael with Aquafault. Aquafault is the only permanent repair material for asphalt and concrete that uses water. An installation is simple. Just pour, add water, and tamp. It's that easy. An Aquafault repair can be open to traffic immediately and fully sealed within 24 hours. Visit Aquafault.com to learn more. I work closely with KM International to design what I believe is the best seal coating unit on the market. The Blacktop Banner Edition seal coating unit available in both 550 and 700 gallon versions. Learn more about the unit by visiting KMInternational.com. Quick startups, fume-free, automatic agitator shutoff, a splash-proof lid, and pumping on demand, these features are essential for any serious asphalt maintenance contractor. Elevate your game with the Craftco SuperShot line of melters by visiting Craftco.com today. Hi, contractors. It's Kyla from Wiscoat. We use Stencil Plus for all of our pavement marking stencils. You can save 10% on your stencil order by using code bb 10 during checkout at stencilplus.com or by calling 877-372-6055. In the past year, Jobber has been our CRM of choice at Wiscoat, and it's made our world exponentially better efficiency-wise. For our small seal coating company, it has helped build the solid foundation we can scale from. Jobber is now a sponsor of Blacktop Banter and helps bring this show to you. With this partnership, Jobber is offering an exclusive savings to BB listeners of 20% off for six months. To take advantage of this, find the Jobber link in the show description and get to improving your process today. So so let me ask you about the clients and content capture. How does that work? Are you coming to me as Marvin, as the owner, and being like, hey, this is what we do. We can create this library for you. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what all you need. You should start writing some of that down maybe and figure it out. And right. then we can directly purposefully create that content right now because these yep. are the main things that you know but then what about on the fly like if i'm out on the job site i'm like hey i, I want to record this we can just record this and it right goes now. to there yep um does that then get distributed or i guess which which are the avenues for that to distribute solely within my business or yes. do i have an opportunity to like go to um abc asphalt uh, in Denver and look at their stuff and be like, Hey, this is how I learned to pave because we don't pave yet in house. Is that mm. possible? Do we do that or not do that? Okay. We do. So, so there's two sides to it. So yeah. So if you're creating content, you have the option to say, Hey, I just want this for me only private. That's the default. Okay. And so anything we take in, it's your content. In fact, if we don't continue the relationship, we package it all up, we give it right back to you. So you, you maintain your business processes. We don't, we don't take those. 
uh, and we protect those vig vigorously. So, but we also offer for clients that say, you know what, I don't mind. I'd actually like to monetize a little of this because then it offsets my cost for my platform. And I can actually, I've got clients that are, you know, break even. They're not paying a dime for our platform. Why? Because they've monetized some of their content. And to your point, people around the country have said, you know, hey, Jimmy, I'd want to use your module and I'll pay you for it. And so we'll we'll act as a broker and and allow that transaction and then we'll compensate you know, the creator. Wow. Yeah. That's neat. Sign me up. You're sign in. Sign me up, Paul. You're yeah, a I'm creator. Sign, okay. Yeah, sign me up. I'm ready. Chris, get the camera. We're about to make bank. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I, that's a fantastic idea, to be honest with you, because so many so many different avenues right now, especially in this day and age, um, like people realize, people think, I think sometimes like, hey, I'm a welder. Hey, I'm a painter. Hey, I'm a seal coder. Hey, I'm a concrete guy. Hey, I do siding. And that that's that getting paid for that service mm -hmm. is the end all be all of their income through their expertise. And this is an avenue where that's not the case. You also get paid for your expertise. You get paid for your knowledge and what you do and, and how you do it. And if if anything, from my experience, being in the asphalt industry, hosting and having a community, for example, uh, at our Blacktop Banner Conference kickoff in, in San Antonio recently last month for Pavex, there were 350 people at our event for the conference kickoff i'm guessing 300 of them were contractors i'm guessing 250 of them had a different way that they lay crack filler down versus everybody else right? really so wow. so i'm sure there's uh i'm sure there's a lot of different variables on how it's done and how to do it and there's guys that were like hey this is more efficient well yeah it might be more efficient for you how to do it but i actually prefer this way for efficiency and whatnot so there's all types of different variables which i guess it if you decide to monetize it and it works, your way works or somebody else's way works. I mean, there's no really true way to do it, but at least the options are there for you to look at and discover different ways to be able to do it. Sure. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of uh, general stuff that would apply, you know, mm -hmm. but you could get down in the weeds like that, too. Or it could be maybe it's folks in your area. And, and so you have to decide because you may say, well, I don't want to teach my competitors. And so and you don't have to. You can say, yeah. you know, hey, I'm not going to do that one. But. But I will I'll monetize these ones that are a little more generic and applicable around the country. And mm -hmm. uh, and then that brings some income back to you. Yeah. Uh, rather, and uh, there's a lot of people that just put it on YouTube and hope to get, you know, some click throughs there. I guarantee you we are uh, going to bring a huge return compared to, yeah, <laughs> the YouTube revenue. Trust me, we went there. that route. We yeah. went that route. Yeah. Unless like, you really enjoy comments of pee -pee, people telling you you're a dumbass and you're doing it wrong. Hmm. Not really the best. And we've come to realize, like, I, I had somebody, like, this was just preposterous side tangent, but on the YouTube side of it, you'll have somebody tell you that, you know, yeah, you didn't do it wrong. You need to do this or whatever. And then if you ever do any type of digging, you find out that that's not even what they do. They're a barista at Starbucks. Right. And you're like, you're like oh, this is preposterous. I've literally wasted time, effort and emotional energy over this. Yeah. And this guy just wanted to get a rise out of me. So, um, yep. yeah, I think that uh, that's a really unique way and, and, and platform to do it. So um, when they when they capture content, how does that work? Do they say do they just send that in a, a drive? Do they send that over and no. you all sort it out? Like, does it no. get caught directly through the app? Yes, the app captures it all. There's no file transfers. You can create teams. So you could task your own team members to do recordings, and then that will go to you. And then you get to preview it, and you can edit it, change it, reject it, approve it. And then if you approve it and you push it up, then it comes to us. And then we do the rest. And we actually take that single video. We translate it into multiple languages, which is a huge thing. Get right? out. No. We have over 60 languages that we can Get translate. Out. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you mean everybody doesn't speak English on your crew? Come on. No, no, no. Or around the world that listens to right? the podcast. Yeah. Right. Why? Yeah. So we can then we turn it into a multilingual video based scope right and and now we're writing the test questions for it we're building activities around it we're turning it into from a video to a full learning experience that you can build a business around wow. and you can build a team around yeah i like you know one of the analogies i give is that we we play a lot of street ball in construction right we just yeah. throw the ball in the middle and go for it and and whereas you know we should be an organized team with plays and training 
and preparation and coaching, all of that we can bring now through the app in a way that makes sense for, for construction people. Mm. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I think about that, uh, quite a bit with, um, in our industry, there's been an influx of, I'm, I'm probably partially to blame for this. I called you out earlier for creating the review process, which we all just love to ask our customers for reviews. I'm partially yeah. to blame for this aspect, which is the asphalt industry has influencers now, right? Mm -hmm. We're like, Hey, you know, use whatever, use whatever. And, uh, we're, I'm part to blame for that. But what you kind of find through that process is the, the fact that there's guys who either could use a way to create separate money, right? In income, um, through that process. But there's also guys who are, I know by them showing their work are go-getters and they're real efficient. They're really business savvy. Like they're sharp at it. And their, their module would be to help scale their business in this vertical, right. And get it there. Um, I think there's a lot of avenues for it, for where it can be used and, and how it can be used. And one thing I, I'd love when it comes to technology and software and things like you're doing is some of the best things that it's used for, we may not see yet. And that's what's really exciting to me because you'll see people who develop something for a purpose. And then all of a sudden later on, it ends up morphing into this actual thing that we didn't design it for, but it really solves this problem really well. I think that there's other things where we design it for this purpose and it does pro solve this problem very well, but it also does this add on, this add on and this add on. And I'm really excited for that for people who um, take this avenue because it's a, it could be um, it essentially is, killing two birds with one stone they're creating their own module their training module right. and right. then they're maybe creating revenue for themselves too and there's a third thing too is that you know you hear a lot about you know the apple vision product and the mm -hmm. you know this idea of vr and ar well it's it's here folks it's not coming it's here already and so one of the things that we're working on right now is a construction wearable awesome. tech awesome yeah sign me up <clears throat> So with this up is, for that too. Okay, we can we can go play around with this. So this is our prototype, but basically we're actually able to record with the camera what they're doing and and then and this is a, a lens that actually displays. So think of it, it's kind of like Get Tony, out of Tony town. Stark, yeah, meets home building, but our construction. And so here for a for a newbie as well, it can be monitoring what they're doing, but also providing instructional warnings and advice and and also we can actually feed some of the modules too you know watch how we build a crack video would you like to watch that Whoa. yes play and it'll just play the video right here in my eye and then i can watch it while i'm on site while i'm seeing what's going on so we're, we're playing with this again this isn't game time ready yet yeah yeah but you mentioned the expansion Still fun. So i thought i'd i'd share that yeah we've been working on this now for two years and received a lot of attention for the product and uh and then of course with apple now doing their thing yeah uh, this whole thing's taken uh you know it's taken off right now yeah yeah so, it's crazy so yeah. what, do, what do you see so uh to bring things in a roundabout way um right now like if somebody was interested and was like hey how do we how do i start getting involved in this i like the idea this seems like it would help what would be the first step somebody would take yeah, first steps would be just to head to our website. Uh, we're at on3.ai. Don't confuse us with the sports on3. The sports guys got, are there too. We actually had our trademark first and we have it in learning and we have the trademark in AI. They have the trademark in sports and media. But anyway, on3.ai and, uh, and from there, you can learn about what we're doing and uh, and or you can just reach out to me directly uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'll be happy to take your call. We're not you know, enormously big where, you know, we all sell, we all take on calls, including myself. Uh, but I'm at Paul at on three dot AI and we'll, we'll have a conversation, learn about your business, see what's going, what you're doing. And then, um, we'll, we could put a proposal together to get you on the app and get going. Wow. Yeah. That's fun. Wait, the LinkedIn, you can find Paul on LinkedIn as well. Correct. Yep. Yep. I'm on cool. LinkedIn. Yep. Cool. Well, Facebook. if if there was, if there was one piece of advice, uh, in your tenure, of your career um, as you were going to be a teacher to start out and then the university university of Wisconsin doing what it does diverts direction sometimes with people um, into what I think it does a good job of diverting people into what they're actually supposed to do, which is kind of ironic when people go there different times. I've heard a few stories about that. Um, but I actually went to the engineering department for maintaining asphalt surfaces, but I spent oh, my, wonderful. I, yeah, I spent my teenage years roofing, but anyways, to get back to the, to the, awesome. the, the other part of it, um, what would be a great piece of advice that you would give overall 
Well, my biggest advice that I'm giving, including my kids, is that the world is changing very quickly right now. AI is going to dramatically change a lot of the service jobs. And so be grateful for what we do in construction, working with your hands and creating and building. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be one of the last bastions of of, of wealth and financial independence. Mm -hmm. So I know sometimes we wake up in the morning and, you know, it's tough to, to you know, push ourselves out there and, and do what we do. But in the end of the day, it's becoming, you know, we're on an island and, and a lot of other industries I was just reading this morning, even the software developers are going to get displaced by AI. And yeah. we're going to be one of the last ones standing in our business. So appreciate what we do in this business. Love our construction industry because it is amazing. And, uh, and you know, realize your potential. You know, you're, you're in the right place, folks. You're, you're in the right area. And, uh, but work hard to, to put AI at your back, too. Don't ignore it because uh, there's a saying that says, you know, AI is not going to replace humans. It's humans using AI are going to replace humans. Mm. That's very, very good. Last statement. I would agree with that. We we uh, are seeing it quite a bit as of late. So when we get off the air, I'll tell you a story real quick. Paul, I really, really appreciate you joining us today. This has been a fantastic conversation. It's so neat to see as the construction industry grows, spaces where things can find a home and, and grow as well. It's very, very cool. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Marvin. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So for myself here in the Blacktop Banner Studio, for Paul, who's just down the road a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this is Blacktop Banner, and as always, we speak asphalt. Peace. Hey, everybody. Marvin here from Blacktop Banter. And if you enjoy the podcast and what we've been bringing to the industry, you can support us through a one-time or recurring donation at blacktopbanter.com. There we have a support tab. You click that and choose your path from there. If you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do us a favor and leave a review there for us as well. As always... We speak asphalt, and thanks for your support.